Welcome back to the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This is The Depths of Felfan, Episode 19, De Ash to Ashes, Part A. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back oh, boy, to The Depths of Felfan. <laughs> Do a quick recap, yeah, a real quick one. Yeah. I don't know where we are. <clears throat> a while back, a while back, you guys were... In the shears, attending a grand ball where the worst happened. The party was crashed. Crashed by none other, none other than one of the great gods named Delron. You guys fled. Fled down that way towards the crag. Not the crag. Towards the... Anybody remember it for a... Was, was it a shoot? Or? We were uh, heading... Oh, we the were the 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 uh, Korg. The Korg. You yeah. guys were heading to the Korg. And then you found out that it was blocked off. You resorted uh, to heading to the, 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 the to the manse of Gretsch, where you guys reconvened, got your supplies, got some wonderfully, beautifully knitted dragon onesies, <laughs> yeah. A and then began to make your way further into the mine for safety. Reaching a certain Part you and the miners that you had hired to work inside the mine split ways. Tanith had a nice um, send off with his uh, halfling rogue friend, and you guys parted ways. Just to fall into a pit of the softest, siltiest sand you could not even climb out. Into a strange, magical, seemed just like a corner of a road, just a turn of a cobblestone road taken out of some, some magical place where you met Tenzani, a strange zombie woman. Right! That, that, that I'm afraid now. I'm gonna kill that bitch like next time I see her. As well as Bone Slimskin. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, favorite cheery bartender. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's coming back. You guys then received a key. Our friend Delkek taking a sacrifice on his person to gain entrance to the Temple of Delron, the Lost Temple of Keldron, sorry. You gain entry to this temple. You see a few rooms that seem to be pretty normal, old, decayed. Seems they've been here for some time. You guys find a few things in the, uh, in the larder and make your way forward deeper into this, uh, into this place. You guys reach a set of stairs where several skeletons jump out behind stone barriers and attack you. You guys handle it with ease. It was really no trouble at all. These skeletons seem to be old, decrepit, even for a skeleton. As the staircase dropped down one stone step at a time, all the way down to the bottom, you guys follow it down. As you get in to this round room, with four, with five, sorry, four corridors coming off of it that are barred, and one large door similar to the one you've seen at the entrance of the Temple of Keldron, the three clawed hand. As you guys look at the reliefs that are on the wall, there were the main one right around the, the entrance to perhaps the uh, main area of the Temple of Keldron. These two half globes with tendrils coming off of them, leading to different, different humanoid creatures. At one side they were walking towards it, the other side they were walking away from it. On the reverse side of this room was another relief, but inside the relief, a statue of this demon, this winged demon with horns on the points of each of its wings, uh, claws on its hands, and a uh, fearsome grin of teeth and horns that kind of come up out of its forehead and do a little spin at the top. That statue in particular, um, would I be able to roll like a investigation possibly to see if it's like a petrified demon or you a statue? Most, you most certainly can, but first, as the entire party, except for Galus, has succumbed to the fear and the airy, chilling feeling deep to the core after seeing this statue stick out of the wall. All of you are shaking with fear. 
<laughs> Galus, you were the only one to hold steady. That is just a statue. It's not moving. There's nothing to it. The rest of them, eyes locked upon the statue as you guys walk around the staircase. Now, we can continue. You guys hear eerie silence as most of you have fallen silent looking at this statue. It's gruesome. The black stone around it seems, seems to almost crawl as your torchlight coils around it. Yucky. Can roll an investigation up here. Yeah, I'll disadvantage on that probably. Uh, you are under the state of fear. I'm not exactly sure if it gives you disadvantage on something. I think you can only... You can't approach a creature. You can't approach it? That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you yeah. just can't approach that creature. Gotcha. So you can't really approach the statue from where you are. You're about 30 feet away. So if it's 30 feet investigation, that's that's a good that's a good distance. I would give you disadvantage, disadvantage on yeah. investigation. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So Erlon squints, looking at that statue. 14 and a 17, so that's good. Okay. 17. 17. You can see it's just a statue. The feeling wears away a little bit, but that that chilling feeling in your inside you still feel. I mean, it's it's hard to shake, but it's definitely a statue. With that investigation, however, you look to the sides again, maybe moving away from the statue a little bit, and these tendrils connecting the people to this orb, each tendril is different. Each one's braided differently. None of them are identical. And when you get closer up, if you do, I'll give you the higher end of the, the, the roll there, the 17. It gives you above 20. It does. Okay, so that one you would be away from the statue and investigating the the uh, the walls. You can see that even in behind these large tendrils sticking out, there are even smaller ones etched into the wall, and smaller ones beyond that that go into even smaller glyphs of different creatures, and they all seem to be coming from the left side, walking towards the globe, and from the right side. Walking away from the globe. Okay. With your last game, you rolled a 20 on a perception, I believe. I rolled some high ones at the yeah. end. I don't know. And you seen at the end of the hallway to the right hand side of the three clawed door a gem on a pedestal. A red gem, airlock. So those kind of uh, those tendrils they are differently braided in different directions and they are, there are smaller ones on the actual walls themselves that kind of fractalize and go smaller within themselves no, they stay uh, they stay the same they're one seamless cord as it looks but behind them you can see it's, it's almost overlapping but it's just incredible artistry I mean you would need either the the, the, the smartest and most creative gnomish small hands to do this or some other extreme magical means. Big time magic. Let's see. And, and there's little kind of reliefs of creatures walking towards the glow. And it almost seems like it's reliefs within reliefs. You know? Perhaps. Roll insight. Insight. Nat 19. <laughs> Nat 19. Uh, for 24. Almost as if they didn't overlap generation after generation after generation. You can't see the end as it goes in so deep. The detail's too fine for you to, to, to pinpoint where it starts. Perhaps they change. Perhaps the murals themselves morph. It's a developmental kind of belief uh, of the truths and monsters. Perhaps, like a developmental relief of like how creatures and monsters came to be, possibly, based on what I'm seeing. And Erlon would relay that information to the party, for sure. And he can't approach the statue because he's still frightened. And yeah, neither can any of you except for Galus can approach that statue. Galus, don't be no shit. Tanith is <laughs> looking rather intently at that statue. Can I, what about I have to roll to identify the demon? You don't have. Okay. It's it's, uh, it's Delron, you know for sure. You're in the temple of Delron. I think uh, that's been uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you're in the temple of Keldron. For sure. Okay. The the three claws gave it away. I believe someone made another amazing uh, religion check on it too, and that information was shared. Yeah. 
You know where you're at. And it is strange and it to fight a temple <laughs> that's, that's dedicated to one particular god. Yeah. That's so. strange. They, this isn't, it's not really on record to find them anymore. The last time they've been heard of, they've all been destroyed. Because there's no temples for singular gods anymore. Just the uh, the pantheons that are set up across the across the face of the planet, face of the realm. Was there any more to your uh, question about uh, the temple? Okay, so definitely the temple kill. Can we get like a kind of a layout of what's uh, what this place kind of looks like? Perhaps I almost like, certainly can do that. Like kind of like a. So these glyph things is like basically like telescopic. <laughs> So you look, you, you need to take your bottle coat glasses and go really far <laughs> away. It just seems you can't see the end of the relief. Like it just goes forever. Seems like it goes it's forever. It's a 3D picture. I <laughs> forgot that not anywhere his glasses. I thought you were straight up making fun of Sheena for a minute. Take your goddamn big ass glasses. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> You had this one is what you'll see. The only glasses that are like four inches thick. Yeah. I just now that you've said that, I just picture Professor Trelawney from basically like big owl, like big owl. Yeah. Yeah. I describe her as the granny from um, the Sylvester. Yeah. If Professor Trelawney was a dwarf, <laughs> I know that. That's why I pictured her as the Grim. The Grim are coming. I will smash them with my frying pan. I'm getting very mad! Something like that. <laughs> My ancestors see. will have something to say about this. <laughs> and that statue... You, you see the uh, gem at the end of this uh, statue's right here. Statue's right there. Yeah, you're gonna we have, need a uh, statue? I probably have something we can use if we want to get 3D with this. Sure. <laughs> Grab that thing behind the Grab wall. that thing. They're not the big ones, the smaller ones. Ooh. That one. That's it's kind thing. of like a demon, right? <laughs> yeah. It's an angel, but... You it's the close. opposite. It's a weeping angel. Oh. It's a <laughs> no, 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 no. I would say things are about 20, 25 feet high. The wall is also about 25 feet high. So this mural you're looking at is 25 feet high, and it's just massive. The first set of pictorials you see of the people are probably about three feet big. You know, three feet uh, tall, maybe about half that, and they just go down smaller and smaller and smaller within and within and within. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so these other hallways, if Erlana, I guess uh, none of them have really been looked at, so Erlana will just kind of go to the precipice of those hallways and just take a look. Are they all shut with doors? Or? They, can you uh, move that right now? Well, yeah, you guys can move. Yeah, we can move. We're just, <laughs> you can't move that way. Yeah, you can't move <laughs> intentionally uh, towards the statue, no, which okay. might even prevent you from reaching these two. So I'm going to say you can... Uh, you can investigate the ones up here, but you do see all of them. All of them are covered or, or blocked with bars. Okay. Yeah, all of them I was blocked with bars. Just gonna ask that. And in the middle of here, in the middle middle of the room, you also see a round pedestal with a switch on it. <gasps> to the left hand side. We are in the left hand. Button. <laughs> <laughs> No, you never pull that's, over. Pull the lever! I was <laughs> just thinking that. Wrong lever! <laughs> I love that. Wrong lever! Each corridor goes out for about 60 feet in darkness. Anybody who has dark vision can look in that far. Mm -hmm. If you have a torch, you can only see about 40 feet. And it's steamed, you still can't really seem, seem to see to the end of it. Caroline will roll perception for the hallways that he can visit. With a nat 19 again nice. for... 24. So, the same one that Gail has seen, you look down, you also see this gem. Yep. And it's giving this dull glow. You can just see the, the makings of a pedestal beneath it. And it's just sitting there, way in the back. Far behind the bars. Far behind the bars. You can also see a second set of bars at the entrance to the second, or to, within that glowing, in front of it, you can see... Kind so of shattered bars in front of that as well. So it's like double caged. You go to the other one, you can see a set of bars in front, the hallway goes out, and you can't see any further. Also, with. Um, you said there was a dark, a dark hallway? Yep. Yeah. I'll have a look down that one. Here. Uh, da, 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 that was perception of 15. Yep, you can see about. Uh, and. With my dark vision? <laughs> you can see. 
the way all the way to you, the end of your dark vision, and the hallway continues. Well, that hallway keeps going. Mm. Okay, so what's this? Here? That is the door with the symbol of Kelvin's claw on it. Okay, right there. Yeah, okay. this is the symbol of the, and he's his statues here, and the door is opposite the room, on opposite the round room on the other side. We came up from there. Yeah, those are the stairs. Okay, yeah. that's yeah, like those stairs. Or well, down from the stairs. Much. Um, um, okay, so for on that door, are there any Just like burning, indentations? Yeah, so like, does it look like that gem that they've noticed is supposed to go into that door? You do see. An indentation in the door, just below the claw. Oh, claw. Okay. Now, if you'd like to, you haven't seen this particular gem, mm -hmm. but when it does come around, you can roll to see if it's okay. the same one that would fit. Okay. Uh, turns, oh, say, well, uh, actually, has not the information about the gem been conveyed that there's like a gem at the end of that hallway? Have you told people yet? I think we ended no. at okay, seeing the no. gem, and that's where we stopped. Okay. So, Galus, as you guys see, Galus is over there looking. Erlon <clears throat> comes around. Tanith, you're you're examining the statue. You're looking at it, confirming it's it's definitely uh, the the demon form of Keldron, uh, the, the the famed demon form of Keldron that you don't ever see in pantheons anymore for the most part, unless you know you're of that kind <laughs> yeah. of yeah. Wait, and, uh, Nani, you're old. You know it's definitely Keldron. <laughs> you're old. <laughs> Insulting Nani is older than most calling 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 if you guys do investigate the other rooms, it's the same thing. It's darkness for dark vision up to 60 feet or 40 feet. You can't see the end of it. So also looking in this room here, down this corridor, the one where Gail has seen the red gem, you look down at the floor and it's almost gutted. You can see on the right hand side, there's just a little bit of the flooring left. A little bit on the left side here, kind of goes up the wall, maybe only about two to three inches of it. Of it. Along, along the wall, and the rest seems to have caved in, to as far as you can see. And you see that as well, Gales. So that there's like a little shimmy, kind of like, section of the flooring, that if we even were to go in there, um, yeah, you know, it, would, it would be like a pitfall, looks like. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, I am not going down that hallway. You, maybe, since, like, you weigh nothing and are yeah, so I mean, fleet of foot. And because so I might be all right, but... I'm wearing 80 pounds of metal. Ain't yeah, no see, way I don't have that one. Wear. So, uh, I'm wearing a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yes. <laughs> at, least, at least you have that. Is that safe? Pants, optional. He needs, he needs another strength point in order to take a shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> Starting some pepperoni. <laughs> So, what are you guys going to do? So, Erlon uh, is looking down the hallway at the gem, and he looks over to Galus, and he says, uh, can't really, is that a gem? Do you see that? He's pointing towards that gem, just making sure he's not seeing things. So, she seems to confirm that it's a gem, so he... Oh, yeah. The vigorous nodding of my head. <laughs> you just hear a slight whoosh on the recording. <laughs> oh, goodness. So. Does it look like something we need to get? Like, do we need the gem? Do we want the gem? Uh, yeah, uh, do we dare touch the gem? Del kind of overheard a comment about the gem. And he just says, well, I think there's an indent in this door that looks roughly gem-shaped. My guess is that it's the key to get us further into this complex. It's it's definitely an angular. Definitely an angular. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, what do we think about this lever? Well, if our luck has it, if we pull that, we die. <laughs> so, <laughs> Erlon... If, <crosses>. <laughs> if we're lucky! If we're lucky, yeah. we'll just die. Yeah. Uh, Erlon crosses his arms and just sighs ourselves into a mess again. Okay. Um, we can just go get the gem. Well, the question is, how do we get these bars open first? And the fact that there's no floor. How far apart are the bars? About, uh, I'd say about three to four inches. 
Bayless claps her hand and turns into a chipmunk. <laughs> turns into a chipmunk. All right. Chipmunk. Well, don't know how you're going to carry the gem like that, but okay. I have hands. Chipmunks have hands. They can carry things. They have cheek pouches. Oh my gosh. Oh my yes. I have cheek pouches. No. <laughs> Fantastic. Do it. Oh, that's okay. perfect. The stage is yours. All right. So I'm just going to like hop through the bars and just scamper my way down. Okay. Is it? It's up in the wall? Sorry? Is the gem like up high? You're not sure. You can't really see the environment the gem is in. Just the glow the of the glow. gem giving it definite height. But it doesn't look very high. You're a chipmunk now. Kind of looks a little high. higher. <laughs> so I get down there and I'm, I'm thinking I'm talking to them, but you just hear. <laughs> I'll need you to make an athletics check. Oh no. We just hear adorable With, uh, squeaking. Squeak, squeak, and squeak, squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. No, I'll, 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 I'll let you roll the, the dexterity for your. Uh, your acro- I'll let you roll an acrobatics. Add plus three to your roll for being a chipmunk. I'm just making that up. Okay, let's see. 19. Yeah, okay, no problem. It's got you guys <laughs> in the This is exactly what I wanted to do, was turn into a little creature. It's yeah. perfect. So you guys see her go down to chipmunk this, uh, uh you kind of chipmunk. Gray? No, no, no. Like little brown, brown, white okay, gray. Okay, stand- yeah. standard chipmunk you guys see in the Temple of Calvary. Slightly thick chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> Thick with, with two teams or three. You can see <laughs> she, she scurries across the right hand wall onto the first little ledge and she, she leaps across, just catching the other edge on the other side and goes down maybe another thirty feet. And then you can see her just off in the distance, this little this little shadow in the in the red in the red glow. Leap again. You can hear it crumbles of little bits of stone click click tick tacking down and they tick. Carolyn looks back. I forgot she could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and roll perception as you make your way into this room. What do I add for a chipmunk? Just the face. Uh, chipmunk <laughs> is Percept- definitely good with perception. Roll, we'll get, give a plus three. Oh, that's only an eight. Okay, you got to let eight total? Yeah. Okay, you see the gem, this, this glowing gem seems just to be taking most of the light and it's just not enough to penetrate the rest of the darkness of the room. How big is it now that I'm closer to it? It's about three or four feet high. Again? The, the pedestal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> from, yeah, from 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 I don't know where you're going to put that in your cheek. From the vantage point, you Special can't see the gem stuff. anymore. Just the glow from okay. the top of the pedestal. What's uh, around the pedestal? Like, is there room I can stand on it? Yep, this room it doesn't a... seem to be broken. Once you've entered the, the room, that seems to be somewhat circular from what you can tell from this side. The ground has is formed and is perfectly flat. And it looks sturdy. It looks sturdy. I'll Chipmunk. shift back to a... Okay, you shift back yeah. to a human. Elf. Elf, sorry, yes. You shift back to an elf and the floor does not give way. It seems sturdy. Your dark vision kicks in. And you can see this room. This room is probably about 30 feet by 30 feet. In front of you, directly in front of you, is a pedestal with a red gem on it. about the size of a fist. It's very angular, very diamond shaped. Beyond that is what looks to be a large sarcophagus or a tomb. It's about 10 feet wide, and then about another 4 or 5 feet high. Can you go to walk over? Is it like a solid one, like a rock top tomb? Yep, seems to be sealed up. Is there, is there markings or anything like that? Roll investigation. Nineteen. Nineteen. Very nice. As you take your hand and you brush this thick layer of dust off of it, it swoops into the air. As soon as you do that, the light, the room lights up. The room is in dim light now. You guys see that the room lights up. You guys can see Galus in her full form, standing over what seems to be a large stone box. The top is <coughs> rounded to shape like, like some sort of creature, some sort of humanoid creature. The Details aren't really there, but you can tell it was female, and it seemed to be uh, her visage was chiseled into the top of this stone sarcophagus. The words, mean? can you read um, God language? Celestial. Celestial. I can. You can. Well, I can. You can read. You can see the words. <laughs> oh, like, well, I can. You can see the words. Sorry. Room 11. Uh, Netra Ames, apostrophe in between, 
And in, in that language it says, God of decay. Ooh. Wonderful. Anybody know a God of decay? God of decay. Well, religion, if you guys want to go for it. Uh -oh. It's a hard one, though. Caroline froze his brow. Yeah, these, these are gods during the war that had fallen okay. and stuff. So this is going back. <laughs> Seven. Nat 18. Uh, no, Caroline's old. Brother boy. That would be religion, wouldn't it? Yes. All right. Yeah, 12 for 12. Delcac, so he's probably 23. 23? Nice. You have heard this name before. <clears throat> uh, reading a book, somewhere long ago you read there was a, a, a list of God's names, and it's just, just as a list, no real... Um, no real information on them, but you remember the name, Grell Nishak? Oh, Grell... Sorry, sorry. Net, net, Netra Ames. Netra Ames. Yeah. But right, this is old. If anything, you know this is old. Like, Oros is still alive since the war. And the war happened back, I believe, I think, uh, three generations ago for your elven family. Ooh. Yep. So a considerable amount of time has passed. We got uh, the first, the first one of your household, Bre Brennian, Brelman, Bre Bre the painter. Yeah. He was the first one to die outside of the war. And that's the room. You guys can see um, the room is also carved in uh, visages of different kinds of decay. You can see skeletons, you can see different creatures in skeletal form, and halfway there you can see pictures of tombs, graveyards, things like that. Is the gem resting on the thing? It's not like floating? No. Doesn't seem like there's any kind of aura around it? Except that red glow that you still see. Erlon does pipe up and he, uh, after some consideration of the of the name Netramines, he says, uh, the first of my family died after the war uh, three generations ago. That was what, about 600 years-ish within that kind of time frame. Like how, so long say, how long is a generation for a high elf? For a high elf. They, they, they could they even live up to 600 years, I think. Oh, jeez. Well, that'd be like 1800. Yeah. Between three and four, you're not quite sure because of the war. A lot of death, a lot of elves died young in life yep, yep. because of it. So a lot of things... Elves, these elves don't have that linear structure to the past anymore. Same with dwarves. A lot of dwarves died. A lot of old people died, and a not not a lot of new knowledge. Not a lot, not a lot of that knowledge came. Oh, it yeah. died. So, so if, if there was a ballpark, how long would that have oh, been? Oh, right. Like how see. long ago? Fifteen hundred years ago. So, Sherlock says about about fifteen hundred years ago, give or take. Uh, like. We know for a fact that uh, that Delron is still alive. He appeared before us earlier. As did Oros. As did Oros. But Netra Ames is an ancient god. I saw it in a text somewhere. She's the goddess of rot, decay. Uh, doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> That's what he says. He calls that out so that Galus can hear too. Mm. Upon hearing goddess of rot and decay, I'm going to Pop a defined sense. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> so I can sense anything affected by the hallow spell or another location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. <laughs> I was say, For the first time, <laughs> sand signs are glowing. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a real answer. Um, yes, one. everything. <laughs> yes, one. One very large. <laughs> She's not scared. <laughs> Who knew that could be? You sense, you sense undead. Oh God. Oh, and no. I think you sense some sort of evil. But it's more of just a malevolent evil. Not really coming from any particular... Just sort of from everywhere? Just just the feeling. It's just since it's, this is 
eerie. It's bad, eerie, bad kind of, uh, that's the kind of feeling you get. Maybe yeah. not so evil, just, this is the house of death. Yeah. This is the temple of death. This is the goddess of decay. You're not getting very good feelings here. It feels on the, the other side of good, but maybe not evil for a purpose. I think malevolent was the wrong word to use. Yeah. I think that was the wrong word to use. <laughs> Pessimistic. But you do <laughs> feel, as you're going around, from the opposite direction, in this the, the opposite room over here. You felt that over there. My apologies. Oh. I was looking at the wrong side of the map. Feel okay. that over there. Yeah, it's a, okay, put yeah. that retcon there. Yeah. Just to clarify that, because yeah, there's not an undead sense in the room that you're in right now. Okay, on with this new information, and it's watching... Drop the divine sense, and then he'll turn around. There's something undead over there. But I'm just getting a bad feeling really from this whole place. What's your range on that? 60 feet. Okay. You get a slight sense of something in that direction. It's still it's greater than your 60 feet, but I said it, so you're just, okay. you just get a slight sense of something. something in that but you're pretty sure there's not many other undead things hanging around in this particular. I'm gonna keep an eye on that hallway. It's barred. Oh, good. Yep, all the all the hallways are barred. Just, just keep an eye on that, because sometimes they're weird. <laughs> so I'm going to tentatively reach out and touch the gang. Constitution saving throw. Dead hard <laughs> contact. <laughs> touch the butt. Do you have less than hundred hit points? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Power word kill glyph. <laughs> Critical Roll did that. It was a power word kill trap. Oh my god. Hey, roll a one. Five. Oh, oh. Hi oh. there, everybody. It's a five. That's a five. five. With a zero. So, Bad. That's a fail. It's <laughs> definitely a Missed fail. Missed you already. As you reach out to touch the gem, you guys see her reaching to touch the gem, and as she just is about to touch the gem, the redness of the gem gets sucked in just before she touches it. You all see this, and it's too late for you to say anything. She touches the gem. The gem disappears. Her hand clasps in a fist. Her two hands come up like this, and she drops on her back. Oh. 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 I'm looking back the other way, I don't even see this. Oh, yeah, that's right, you're looking the other way, you didn't see it happen. Yeah. Aaron yeah. holds his head, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god, oh, that's she, right. She just dropped on her back. G Galus, can you hear me? She you just... can. Can I? You're standing there, holding the gem. Oh no. Galus! <laughs> Roll perception. Sorry. <laughs> We're going with the dick. Nine. Nine's enough. As you feel a hand on your shoulder. Oh, the light went out in the room. She dropped. The light's still there. The red dot. The red dim. There was a dim, there's still dim light that left yep. the room after, but the red redness is gone. You feel a hand on your shoulder. What do you do? Sorry, look over my shoulder. You see Alaric. No. You see him. You see his skin color. You see his hair. You see his blue eyes. He seemed real. Like who else? He seems shocked for a moment, and his mouth parts, and he says, "Gates." Oh no, I'm dead, am I? <laughs> <laughs> you can see he looks down at the ground and. He, he immediately goes down and puts his hands on the, the, the uh, on the belly of your body, and... Do I notice myself laying on the ground at this point? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> We're having an out-of-body experience. <laughs> Can I, but I still have the gem, right? Look, it's the ethereal body. Does it feel like anything? Does it look like anything now that it's in my hands? It feels like a gem. It looks like a gem. It's got a fair amount of weight to it. Do I notice anything about my body on the ground, or my... Wrong medicine? You notice you're not holding the gem for one? Yeah. Your skin has gone pale. 18. And you're not breathing. <gasps> oh no. Alaric stands up, and he looks at you, and he says, This is not quite... You're not... This is not time. You have to go back. And he 
tries to like push you towards the body. What do you mean go back? <laughs> back into you. We're having a, a ghost whisper moment here. <laughs> That's a good show. Um, but I'm here with, with you. Why would I want to go back? You can't be here with me. And he touches your belly now. And he says, you can't be here. How do, how do I get back then? He looks dumbfounded. And his mouth opens wordlessly. And he just kind of gestures towards the body. You guys see Kayla's drop. Yep. And so she's non-responsive. That's what we see. And the, the, is the gem still even there, or is it gone? It's gone. And so, can, I'm going to roll some... Would that be an investigation? What would it be to kind of figure out what would be going on here? Arcana? Okay. Arcana. Okay. Any of you watch? If you could watch, I'm going to get chipmunks and join Nat 20. Nat 20. Nice. Nat 20. Where's that pop? So we need it. So that's uh, 23. Nat 20. Clearly, some sort of magic has incapacitated her. The gem has now disappeared. To to say the least, I imagine you, you do think she's dead. Something must have happened to her. Without getting closer to see her body, you can't determine that, but this is simply something magical. And and the gem is now gone. The, 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 the gem's gone. I can't... The, 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 it looks like she's dead. He, he squints. He's you know, he's gonna just see if he can tell anything about her form from this distance. Can I tell about the How goes your eyesight? That's a, <laughs> that, that's 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 a big one. Perception. So Twenty total. Nice. You sit there. You hold onto the bars and you look. You look. You look in deep, and you can see that her hands are clasped right up here in fists. Are they shaking? They're not shaking. They're just clasped tight. She doesn't seem to be heaving. Her chest doesn't seem to be moving. Good roll. Good roll. She squints. She squints. He squints. <laughs> Somebody open the chamber of secrets. <laughs> Somebody pull those bars off. And he hears. He can't hear breathing. He looks. Her chest not moving. He, he looks back. Galus is not breathing. Something's something's gone wrong. She heard. All right. We need we need to do something. It, the, 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 these bars. How? He looks back to the switch. And the I'm gonna take yeah. oh, the lever. Now he just walks over and pulls the lever. Oh, oh. no. Oh. D4. Oh. D4. Kalex's body disappears. I get it. <laughs> right. That's a four. Four, four. These bars open. The ones on the left hand side of the door. Caroline yeah. looks over to the left. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now he pulls the lever again. These doors, these bars close, these bars heave, but don't move. You can see rust and something falling down from on top of them. No, um, let's go with a frying pan? Roll, uh, <laughs> you, 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 pull the, you pull the switch. You pull the switch. Erlon takes out his light hammer, and he's just going to try and knock the rust off. You roll and tap. That's 13. You hit the bars. Clang! 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 <laughs> Tanner for perception. Uh oh. As the d rust does seem to come out in, in, in heaves on that one particular one. <laughs> oh, no. It's Aaron and I. Nine? Nine. Aaron now has tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> you got that ten as Perception, well. please. What? Yeah, let's roll perception. Me? You? Oh. Sounds good. Twelve. Twelve. You can hear this. Oh no. I don't like that. <laughs> Do we hear that? Is that the blood gurgling up my throat? <laughs> oh, Alaric. Rolls an actual twenty. His eyes immediately shoot down towards the hallway. He draws his bow that you're familiar with, and he lets an arrow go. And 
what you see, the arrow shoots off into the dark. And uh, let's see if you can throw up That's another natural 20. Nice. I'm going to keep this dice over here for now. <laughs> start rolling from my back. Gonna I was going to say, take a roll it for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't hear anything. Can I identify that sound? Yes, roll knowledge change. Seventeen. Seventeen. Well, as the sound goes, you're familiar sound. You've seen, heard this noise before in the forest, uh, before out scouting and hunting and stuff like that with, uh, with Alaric. And you've always avoided them because they're slow, they're big, they can't get prone, and they're black puddings. Oh no! As you can see, pudding? it's called a black pudding. I love when delicious watermelon. That's what they do. The guy in the middle of that pudding is not a, is not the pudding. As you see this kind of tendril slap up on the ground, and it's about ten feet away from Galus's body. You see that too? Yep. You also see one on your side as it slaps up and grabs at the bar that was vibrating, taking your roll of dexterity save for your hammer. The hammer. Not nineteen. That's it. You pull the hammer, you pull the hammer back, and then it wraps around the pole. And your own gets the hell back. Yep. Yeah, so he jumps back, and looking at that ooze, can he try, he's going to try to identify it as well. Nature. That one. That one? Nope. Oh, yeah. oh that's cool. It's, it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm going to roll nature as well, because yes, I, might, I may have a... Uh, roll with advantage, Ten. if you're from the Underdark, or you're, that's where you, you might know this better. This is more of a less, less, uh... Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah, it's a black pudding. Uh, you know, because black pudding. Bad news. Bad news. I only like vanilla. That is not good. <laughs> black pudding is actually pretty good. It really it is. is. It really uh, is. Not these ones, but... Not yeah. the, no, the real one. <laughs> the ones that go with an English breakfast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Erlon, uh, draws his quarterstaff, and he looks at the quarterstaff and looks at the pudding. Did this even work on that? Of course. Uh, it's better, it's, no, I need a spoon. Ooh, I have a giant spoon. It's better. I have a giant stick. <laughs> you know what? All I'm saying is, if that will, that is safer than your fists against that thing. And what did you roll for yours? Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, roll knowledge nature for me. Okay. Yeah. Touch. No touch. No touch. Uh, I touch. Well, well. You know. You know one specific thing about this <laughs> Only <creature>. one. <laughs> Only one need to know. <laughs> it's black. And it's what need you to know? If you hit it with lightning or slashing damage, it can make another one. You know that. <laughs> Do not cut it, and I am not breathing on it. Now it will make another one of itself. Slashing and lightning. Gee, the two things I do well, I can't right. do. That's fantastic. My uh, blade cannot use. My breath of it cannot use. <laughs> so thwack it. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> With my giant spoon. <laughs> Comically <laughs> sized spoon. My spoon I is too big. I can't just carry around a giant spoon. Yeah. My true. spoon is too big. Our first step was going to be to figure out how to get those bars to drop. If we want to get anywhere near that. Oh, I hit first it. Step. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta eat the pudding. No, that's all I said. <laughs> Don't get eaten by the pudding. Mm, it's next time. Once we kill the pudding, then we can eat the pudding. How's that? And I can cook it up later. Should we black pudding? Black pudding, pudding, black pudding. Black pudding, pudding. Mm. Pudding, pudding. <laughs> yeah. So see you guys over here. This is the, this is uh, Galus's end of the hallway. So you guys, it's gonna be off center slightly, so we can. Cause it's a rather large room. Ooh, dude. It's just that was just the topographical thing. These are ten foot corridors, and uh, yeah. But you said it moves really slow, right? Twenty feet a turn. So you can always stay. Yeah. Oddly enough, I forgot to say though. I forgot to tell you this. When you hit that switch, 
stairs. Went back up. Oh, great. Oh, no retreating now, boys. We're, we're I forgot to say that. That's my fault. We could retreat anyway. we got to get a uh, well, yeah. noodle in the That's right. we got to get the noodle. Chipmunk babies out of the... <laughs> the noodle and the chipmunk <laughs> babies. The rocks. <laughs> Everybody, roll for initiative. Oh, my God. <laughs> Natural 19, 23. 23. Nice. Daryl. You're just killing it nice. That's all our players. We need a Larrick. Natural 2. Not on the edge. Oh, not on the edge. Not on the edge. I guess so he already got his attack off, so that logistically makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and Black Puddings. Oh, that's a 19. Oof. Oh, boy. Probably, I, I, I say it because it means they're probably going first. No, no, Yay. no, they're at minus three. Minus oh, three. Minus three. Not first, but it's not exactly somewhere in the head of the field. Yeah, I was going to say, probably Black after pudding. Zach. Probably after Zach and I. Your blogs. Troublesome. <laughs> All right. Air along. So, it's coming up through the grates? Yep, it's just grabbed on to the, one of the grates where you can see a, another pile of the ewes kind of up over on the edge. You can see it constantly just moving. Lovely. The air bubbles inside of it, bursting open. And... Wonderful. Like a boiling, living pile of tar. Bingo. Exactly. Yep. I think we'll bring a tar pit to come to eat you. <laughs> Just a sec. Alright. Okay. So, just hold that up real quick. Alright. He's gonna. Alright, so moving in. Attacking is probably not a good idea. He'll pull out his little short bow and he'll knock an arrow and fire it. Roll so that attack. Roll attack. Yeah. Upon seeing him pull out the bow, Tan was like, Yes, yes, do that. Uh, yes. It'll dissolve your staff. <laughs> <laughs> or you. So that is going to be a 15 to hit. 15 is a hit. These guys are blobs. It's a big mass. Of uh, muck. Go, you can see the, the. Are you looking up for black pudding? Maybe a little bit. Don't look up for black pudding. <laughs> no more information from Tanith. That's all. That's Tanith it. just says what he already knows. This is for me as an uninformed shrub. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be uh, seven piercing damage. Seven piercing. Fire! Run it with fire! Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I'm yelling that, but nobody hears me. Yeah. And that'll be his okay. that'll be his turn. He looks at her husband though. She might be okay where she's at. Even though she's definitely dying. What? Even though she's definitely dying. <laughs> definitely dying. Yeah. No, I think she's dead. If she's not breathing, yeah. she's only, you can it's only be it some time. You can only down. be dying for so long before you're dead. It's true. And uh, he'll move back. Sounds good. That's about the limit of your play space, and then any. After there, we're going to have to assume you're really far away, but you are really far away. I'm really far away? No. Your constitution is, um... Zero. That's, that's, that's Same. important to know. Mm. Yep. Same here. <laughs> 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 Alright, that was Erlon. Next up, Delcac. Okay. Uh, so what we are going to... I'm going to... Hearing everything there, I'm going to be using my long range as well. Um... I up. Fire! Fire! Uh, <laughs> I'm actually to just to kind of give my try and cancel out my negative stuff here. Uh, I'm going to use my insightful fighting yep. uh, as a bonus action. So I'm going to get those blobs to make a deception check, which should hopefully I don't think they have a brain. I don't. Think I don't think so, them. but you never know. <laughs> Because basically it's just going to try and make sure that I can get advantage, which would cancel out my disadvantage, so I can just attack normally. Uh, his charisma is one. one. His intelligence is one. Okay. It works. <laughs> Easy. I'll take that. So attacking oh, yeah. at just regular, which is yeah. nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's easy enough. Uh, and then 
Uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to go for an attack. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, with my short bow. You got it. Let's see what we got. Oh, three? Yeah, so three. Jesus. That's a eight. That's a hit. Oh my god. <laughs> I will take that. They have a lot of chest above. I will take that. Their that. AC is seven. Don't roll a one. Yeah. Just don't roll a one because you know we love them. <laughs> yeah, that's really yeah. a horrible one. <laughs> oh, nope. except that's, that's yeah, a bad so yeah. that's a that's a <laughs> six damage. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So uh, and where I haven't moved yet, I think I'm gonna get just I'm gonna keep myself a little bit closer to. So we'll be Sounds moving kind of back as we're shooting. Sounds good. Galus, you yo. see this yo, yo. black yo, ooze. I was not prepared yet. <laughs> I'm always at the end of the line, so I'm like, what? Yeah, it's time you're up there. I know. Yeah. What do you do? Alaric looks, Alaric looks hard at the creature, his bow. He's knocking another arrow. I have a flame blade. But you, you, have, you have a flame blade? I do. Like, like, as a green spell. Green flame blade? No, it's like a, as a spell, yeah. Yes, you, you have. You a fiery blade in your free hand. I mean, that's a fire. But that's what the spell says. How you need that, yeah? Yeah, and I have it prepared, which is convenient. Okay. Um. <laughs> what do you know? You I'm ready. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, well, let's hit it with a flame blade. All right, roll to attack. AC7. That's an eight. Oh, oh, it's oh, one. Oh, that's, two. that's two of them. So you slash out with the blade. You guys can see this red fiery arc flash out, hit the creature. Roll some damage, please. But we can't see her. You can't see her. Does this uh, make any sense? That is. <laughs> I'm so confused. Thirteen. Thirteen? Boy. Thirteen fire. damage? Yeah. Jesus. I rolled three d6 on that. Is he immune to fire? No, he did. No, he's not. Don't make him immune to fire? Inches from your face, and it slaps back. Ooh. I tried to get you. No, 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 no. <laughs> eat it. Just eat it. Go get you. Have a giant spin. It's go get you. Of course. <laughs> and it, the one over here with you, Galus, moves up. And eat your corpse. In to your spaces. Oh, no. Oh. Row, row. And. Something cold just touched my leg. No, it will now. <laughs> it was a lark. It was, it was jam. <laughs> it was and a ghost. <laughs> you see one of the pseudopods come down and slap right on top of your body. Well, that's not nice. Well, your dead body is dead. You're prone, so you get, it's, it's advantage for that. So. Oh, I was going to say, it's like he accidentally knocked the... That's going to wipe my stick in the air. Erlon doesn't want to stick in <laughs> Not the worst things on my phone. Ruh-roh. Ruh-roh. Ruh-roh, baby. 17 <laughs> points of damage. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, to your corpse, which has... What? No. I wasn't paying attention to damage. Yeah, 17 points of damage. You just oh. killed your already dead body. I don't even know what I'm at. 29. Okay. So, 29. Four turns. Now you guys can see 
that there's this golden shimmer across the way, suspended above Galus's body that's on the ground. And you can see that the black pudding is actually being held above it as it starts to encroach and cover this gleaming light. Force and it's fields. slowly it's slowly dissipating as the creature begins to expand over oh, Galus's body. Oh no. Somebody well, save me, please. That's terrifyingly interesting. Right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It is your turn. Oh, oh. Kill everything, please. <laughs> or save my dead body. Please. Uh, step one, we'll move we back. Try harder. <laughs> Seeing Dale is getting eaten, absorbed. absorbed. Oh, yeah. Over here, you're seeing this across this hallway, yeah. way over here. Whatever. It's just over here, so she can okay. have access to it. Yeah. Okay, can't yeah. see it. Still moving back to twenty foot. Okay, sounds good. Oh, yeah. Shoot, with a heavy crossbow. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Remember, AC7. Uh, 19 to hit. Not miss. Hey. Yeah, that's a, that's a not miss. Right. Yeah. He hit it in one Four of the damage. Four damage. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, what roll on you hit? Four damage. Oof. Goes through no the nose damage. into my visage. Right. Don't have any modifier on that? I'm not proficient with a heavy crossbow, so there is no. Oh. Is it a martial weapon? Uh, it's a dex weapon, though. You t- add your dex bonus. Well, not according to this. I What's your dex? Flat d10. What's your dex? Not high enough, ever. <laughs> to zero. Well, there we go. That, that, that makes perfect <laughs> sense, then. Yeah, okay. That's, <laughs> that's why I said a low. That'll do it. Plus a hit. Nobody. I don't know. Help. No. Okay. This is one nothing. of the scariest creatures to fight in D&D. I because you just know. don't know how to fight a puzzle. I mean, I'm going to jab him. Got your frying pan? Do you have? Are you a, you're a dragon? Yeah. Do you have fire breath? No. I have electric breath. Yeah. The yes. worst guy. The He's worst one to fight for these. For this. I mean, it was put in two. Oh, excuse me. Um, I mean, I have uh, poison breath. But... I have dead breath. Well, yeah, it does not have enough poison to go in. I on have that. no breath. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, Nani? Rage and I attack. was just going to say, I'm going to rage, for starters, because then at least somebody gets some advantage out of it, even if I get eaten by ooze. You um, can't get eaten, too. I can. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the problem. I'm to escape. Um, at least you're resistant. You can't leave. So you can't leave. There's okay. ooze. We're in the middle of battle. I'm dying. Ten, I'm ten, ten, ten. It's got to go pee in the middle of battle. Ten, <laughs> ten, typical <laughs> ten. It's just like, all right, guys, I'll be right back. Sure. Hold on, guys. I can't kill anything until Did I pee. Did Oros teach you just to let it go? <laughs> let it go. Life or death, man. Just let, let it go. go. I'm sorry. I've got a nervous splatter. <laughs> nervous splatter. <laughs> I roll Don't worry about the fact that I'm dying. Just go have a pee. And how far away am I from it? Oh, yeah. Five feet. Okay, Five so feet. it's right there in it's front of me. Right you, you can attempt to bonk and then move out, but it would attack of opportunity. There are attacks of opportunity. Yes. It's a pudding. Uh, <laughs> it's a pudding um, with, with proboscis. <laughs> so. Sprinkle some powdered sugar in it and eat it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to rage and bonk, I guess. That's, That's right. Like rage and bonk. Rage, rage and bonk. And you're level four, Nani? The old rage and bonk, yep. Yeah. Okay. I had I had one with the dog one. bag over the head technique it was called. Thirteen. Thirteen? <laughs> is it hit? She rolled its AC. I did. I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, it's not going to get it. We're good. Uh, we good. So I'm one D twelve. D twelve. Welcome to D twelve City. Max damage, please. Three. That would be nice. Five plus two. Plus your rage. Plus your plus your it's rage a, plus two and your strength. So it's. Wait, yeah, what? Like 12, yeah, so. That was a lot of numbers. What just happened? So you rolled a 5. I rolled 5, you plus I get 2 your, bonus damage. You add your 2s, so that's 7, and you got your bomb. Get my strength you get your yeah, strength. every time you roll damage, for sure. It's your, uh, it's your modifier for your weapon. You bonk. So it's uh, you get 12. 12. That's 12, 12 damage. damage. Very nice. As that pseudopod came out and raided right your face, it. you just smashed that shit Not right today, down. Satan. <laughs> was that 12 total? 12, 12 total. Or the bonk. Fireworks. Okay. And also, um, uh, <laughs> the first creature I hit with an 
attack has disadvantage. So fucking good for Distance. you guys right now. Um, oh warriors my God. appear when raging. First creature you hit with an attack has disadvantage on attacks against others. Um, nice. And when an attack hits, you guys have resistance. That, that is so good. Why I'm you know what's going to be I don't know if the bomb is going to do anything, but oh. at least I'll give them some advantages. That's, that's a huge buff. That's a huge so, buff. That helps you guys. Okay, and then we go to Alaric. Well, that is, you're here now. It doesn't help you because you're fighting a different use. Alaric draws his longbow. You can see, or has draw the longbow drawn, and his, uh, he, he pulls back the arrow and lets another one launch. I need a death saving throw. 17. Good. One death save. Didn't she only take 17 damage? She's just 29 damage. Didn't she? Oh, she's dead. She's already dead, dead. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just being dead. Layers, brother. Layers. <laughs> she's being more deaded than she was already dead. She's already dead, but she's not going to get it. She's right. dead. Oh my. Hey. Airlock. Action on the top of it's multi dead. 30. No, no, frame. One, two, three. You, you can flank it for sure. Lots of yeah. Yep. He's going to flank. Get, get advantage, I guess, which of doesn't course. really make a difference, but still. Oh, getting in there with your hands, huh? He's going to use his quarter staff. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, he's going to channel the power of his key. I can't figure out which one it is. Nat 19, so not a crit, but close. Curve of the quarter staff. We're, we're still under the effect of fear. Would that just not be a regular attack roll to the. This is. Uh, we're not afraid of this. You're, you're not attacking the statue. You're not afraid of oozes. You're afraid of the statue. Okay. Yeah, that's that's. It's <laughs> just the thing that's so I kind of should have rolled that last. Over there. I should have technically rolled that last attack at advantage, but whatever. No worries. Were you, were you rolling with a, a start of disadvantage? Yes. Roll another one of those. Right. See if you get that next twenty. Nah, I'll spike it. Oh, I mean, <laughs> actually, well, even with my bonus, yeah, that still would have. I mean, it would have hit, but the other one was better. So we'll mm-hmm. we'll, we'll let it stand. So I'll just cover that. Aralon is uh, going to use a key point to do flurry of blows. Of course, as he well, is. and he's. Uh, since he's using Flurry Blows, he'll also do Hand of Harm, which is going to be necrotic damage on top of that. Yep. So I'll make two, two other attacks after this quarter staff damage, which is two-handed, and that's going to be nine bludgeoning first. Unarmed one. Nat 20. Oh, nice. So, You're just killing it today, dude. So three, well, let's see. Would that be 4d4? Because of the necrotic damage, or three if, if, or are you you're rolling necrotic damage on a dice? Yeah, so double the dice is what it is. So it's, if it's if it's a dice, you double it. If it's a bonus, you double. It's good. It's one d four plus dex. So as much two, damage as you can. Two d four bludgeoning, six ten bludgeoning, and five necrotic damage. Not bad. It's looking. And uh, that's the first one. The second one. Not another nat 20. Nice! As of now, it's you guys have been beaten on it, and this every time you hit it, this black stuff sprays on the ground and doesn't move anymore. It's about half the size right now. Oh. Let's see, that's seven eleven bludgeoning for the second hit, and five necrotic for the second hit. Nice. It is not looking good. It's about a pile as big as a chair right now. Oh. Erlon just went in with his fist, just smash, smash, just black ooze splattering everywhere. <laughs> Not a bit of it catching on his hands, he's so fast. Yep. Jeez. Two nat 20s and one to her. That'll do it, man. Jeez. Delkek. Alright. Um, excuse me. Yeah, so I think what he's going to do is... Probably same idea where he's going to try and get into more of a, I guess, a, like a flanking position. So, we'll bring... Actually, you know what? No, actually, I don't have to move, because I just remembered. I'm going to use my steady aim bonus feat instead. So if I don't move, I automatically have advantage that, uh, on my yeah, That uses your bonus action. Yep. Yes, but yep. by not moving, as long as I don't move, I have advantage on my attack, which yep. is great. And as a bonus with that, sneak attack. So, let's... Right. Let's see what happens. Roll in. Hold on. Roll in sight. Inside? Sure. 18 on the die. 18 on the die. You know, you can see that this creature is almost dead. <laughs> you can also see 70 or 80 feet that way in a dim lit room. Galus 
is on the ground mm -hmm. being consumed by one of these things and that's all you see. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I want to put that out there because it's a legitimate, you can see both of these things here. Mm -hmm. This one's almost dead. You know, okay. And I'm almost dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those bars are still up, are they not? Yep. Yeah. You probably hit it with your crossbow. Fire. I was just gonna say, what's the? Uh... It will be a dis. It will make the. Uh, it'll drop your attack yep. to disadvantage. Uh, yeah, short bow is up to eighty feet. Eighty. So how long is? So how far is that hallway? You'd have to move ten feet up to get it regular. Okay. So I'm good with that actually. Yeah. You'd have to move at least ten feet, but that would get rid of your steady aim. That's that's totally fine. I I agree. See, have, seeing kind of what's going on here, he's like, all right, you guys between you two. You've got this. So we're, we're all right. So yeah, that's I think that's the plan. Okay, I'm going to see that. We're going to go for the shot. Okay, move your fella and roll the attack. All right. So he's going to be up here, I guess, technically. So I'm going to have to be shooting through the borrowers. Yep. Um, but yeah, so yeah. I can say that kind of eliminates my advantage, which kind of sucks. You're going to get one attack of opportunity on you. You're okay. going to have to get close enough to that ooze. Yep. Um, actually, I'm going to say no. Because that ooze is half the size, I said. Right. So that ooze is right at 90. So you're not in the space of that ooze anyway. Okay. The eraser. That'll work. All right. Oh, okay. yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Here you go. So that, yeah, so that, we'll roll for that ooze. Move in. Because it got smaller. I was beating the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah, that works. That's <laughs> not sure, for sure. All right. <laughs> that is a 21 to hit. Oh, so that's, that, uh, that's, that's definitely going to hit. That's and three times it's AC. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> 21. Yeah. That's a side rule. And that you roll a... three times it's AC, it's an automatic crit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so that's 12 damage. 12 damage, all right. It's on the uh, the one that's consuming Galus. Still quite large. Galus. How heavy is this pudding? Heavy? Hmm. Oh, danger. Scary. I rolled a four, so it's not gonna probably be. It looks pretty heavy. Seven. I mean, it probably looks like a ten, maybe a, a ten by five area. How much water would that weigh? That's a lot of water. That would be very heavy. Ten pounds per gallon. A lot, a lot of heavy. Very specific. I have used to have It's ten pounds per gallon. Oh, the more you know. It's probably about ten gallons. So thirty gallon tanks. Oh, probably thirty hundred gallons. Yeah. I would call a couple hundred gallons. No, five gallon fermenters. Like, Anyway, I'm not going to pick it up, which is my... <laughs> 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 That's 1,200 kilos. That's 1,200 kilos. Heavy. I'm that woman with the numbers right now, like, flashing before her. All right, right now. What did you figure <laughs> out? <laughs> I was going to pick it up, but... <laughs> pick up ooze? Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> so, like, 1,200 pounds of jello. Uh, <laughs> fire blade again, I yep. guess. Yeah. Uh, that's an 18. That's big it. Nope, sorry, miss. Slicing right into those, that black muck. Ah, oh, six. Just catches a bit of it. You can see it burn off the trail. You guys see another, another uh, uh, arc of fiery light from the hallway down there. Aaron is beating the hell out of booze. He does not see it. Okay, you need Oh, wait. Oh, should I have made a death saving throw there? Nope. Okay. No, at the end of the round, you make the death saving throw for, okay. for, for the body. Yeah, you're already good. Nutty! That's me. We're going again. This is going to be a big 19 to hit you. Ow. No. <laughs> oh, it gets disadvantaged on everybody but you. Everyone but me. Everyone but you. Good thing it's not hacking you. Yeah, great. That's a good thing. So excited for that. 18 <laughs> plus a bunch of numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's eight, yeah. Uh, six. 18 plus six. Oh, that no, I'm attacking you. Oh, oh, you're attacking me. I'm attacking you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So oh. Nine, 19 oh. to hit. I thought I was attacking some oh, shit. Okay. 19 to hit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got three. It's less exciting. Bludgeoning. Three bludgeoning. Three bludgeoning. Uh, yep. Sorry, six bludgeoning. Ow. And then four d8 acid damage. Oh. So you take three bludgeoning because <laughs> you. Resistance. 13 acid damage. Really low. Really low. So 16 total. That was a uh, far below average, yeah. 
thinks you know to bed so that at heat gets you with the pseudopod wraps it around your arm and you can feel some of your uh, cloaks begin to disintegrate and some of that fine fine woolen knit that you've made just disintegrates instantly it's like damn it doesn't that have because she's raging not the acid damage. Oh, yeah, unless she was a pathogen. Yeah, it was uh, six points piercing, so it would have been three for that. I think I think I heard you make sure that. Yeah, so it was 16 total. Excellent. I get closely on Barbarian and that and this turn. Okay, the pseudopod this way then, or the black queen over here. Galus doesn't even seem to react to your how you envision yourself right now. As it moved right into your guys' persons, now it moves again. And encompasses the body. The golden, the golden sheen. I'm just gone. Goes out. <laughs> I'm just going. So it again attacks you, your lifeless body on the ground. Gears. That's it. two piercing damage. Twenty-four points of acid. Ooh. Ooh. That puts me at less than zero. Roll another death save, please. Maybe. It's a nat 20. Oh, very nice. She stands up! <laughs> <laughs> I am alive again! Wow. I am alive! What does that, she that punches time? her way out of the baby. You, 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 you automatically stabilize uh, it. Hold on, hold on a sec. This but is I was way there's other, there's other factors involved here. Um... I'm going to say with that death save, that is not coming from you. It's coming from something inside of you. What you guys see, roll 4d8 for me, please. Oh, you have, like, shoot through the black hole. That's these ones, right? Yep, roll four of them, please. That was actually, that's really cool if that happened. Yeah, that that's yeah. so good. She's like, I'm so over dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 17. 17. As... Galus, as you're standing there, you can feel feel something in your chest, almost like that you couldn't really feel anything before, which is really strange. And you can feel like a, a thump of a heartbeat, just one boom, boom. And from down below, you guys can see, everybody can see this wave of golden energy just move away from Galus's body through the creature and around the room for about 20 feet. And it's just this woof. All of you guys see it. It's like the sun came up and then went down again. Hmm. Creature, later. you can see the creature <laughs> all <laughs> yeah. over, just burning on all sides. I carry my own defense, apparently. You, wow. Yeah, in the form of a tiny little baby, whatever. Oh, and is. you haven't made a failed death save yet, so no. I won't get that. Like, okay, that's, like that's fine. Baby no. Jesus is inside wow. of you, basically, is what's happening. So you are still in your form. <laughs> your body is still down there. Roll okay. perception. Uh, 13. You can see your chest... Rising and falling again. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> it, it solves the, pro, the, the after the battle thing you guys had to deal with, which is really cool, about getting over here Don't in time me. to save her life. <laughs> which is really help. cool. We just kind of pre circumvented that. That was, that was excellent. <clears throat> she <clears throat> saved herself. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> Something, well, somebody, say somebody did. did. She's a strong, independent elf who nice. don't need no man. Attack, attack. <laughs> Boom. Ten. On you, my man. And uh, next oh. up is Nani. For real this time, not for fake. Say <laughs> <laughs> uh, screw it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash it with my all. Do it. I'm getting more of this ranged shite. <laughs> What's your uh, damage bonus? Uh, my mall uh, plus four. Okay. <laughs> That's a uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. If you roll a 1 on that damage dice... Well, I got 2d6 plus 1. He's dead. Uh, you have to roll that's that's six, 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 six points. points. Yep. Yeah. You get one for each dice in that. He is gone. The last one, you drop them all right into the center mass of this, and it just just squats out. It's like hitting a water and, balloon. And then right? just and just seems to stop moving. Uh. Bubble, bubble here. And then that's it. My front hand's not going to help me now. <laughs> How far away are they from us? Far. So they're at the Wait. other end of this hallway. Right. How, how, how long, long is the hallway? Hall? Between, between, between 60 and 80. Oh, I'm not getting there. Yeah. And um, no there's floor. bars anyway. You're and there's no floor. You're raging. <laughs> you're the advantage of strength things. And you can break the bars. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so inconspicuous. The <laughs> metagaming pigeon? Is that you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> your device sense. When, when they're new players, it's called. I think I hear my conscience calling. Okay? <laughs> it's called hell. Conscience calling. <laughs> divine sense. Oh. Divine yeah. inspiration. <laughs> so this is the rusty bars, right? Yes, yes. yes. Well, then, Are you yeah. my conscience? Jim no. Cricket over here. You don't know me. So you look at these yeah, bars, right. and these bars oh, are yeah. about no. two inches in diameter. My thumb pad. That's true. Okay. Give it a whirl. What are you going to do? Pull on the bars or smash them? What the hell? All right. Roll that attack. You can pull switch. Definitely hits the bars. <laughs> I'm moving out of the way. Roll some damage. Oh, I missed. I'll be really sad. I was putting them at AC 16 because of the rust factor in them. Create salt water. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's 14. 14 points. You smash the bars. One of them, you can see at the top, pulls out this big chunk of rock and kind of, kind of slides down the bar, and it's now hanging askew. There's four bars. Four big bars. Can I just wiggle through there? <laughs> not not even. It's a six inch spa space now. I'm not that little. <laughs> no. Everyone? <laughs> I don't know. You're pretty <laughs> beefy now, man. I don't know. All I don't that know. <laughs> he suddenly has muscles. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 more, <laughs> one more point of strength, and no, I wouldn't be able to. He used to be a, Ooh, and that was a. <laughs> Alaric moves back. You can see his eyes are wide with fear. Of me? Uh, from the. From the. From the yeah. But blood, blood pudding because uh, technically speaking he can't he has to move away from the creature to get a normal attack or I thought I pooped the pudding. Nope. nope. No, it's so uh, it's definitely got severely damaged. Oh, come on there. Oh, that's right, AC seven. And that is his third one on the D eight. He's shoot. feeling very insignificant today. He should but it overt. But it is looking much smaller. You guys can see are uh, you, Galus, you can see a large portion of it slough off from the back and the fall into the crevice behind? On the other side? Or maybe yeah, no. You're a little far from the door. We are, but it does we are borals again. Slough off. You go. Now, Galus, I wouldn't say you take a <laughs> death saving throw, but uh, you have. Don't have to. Oh. Um, back to the top of the list. Erlon! Erlon will, uh, since that ooze is now turned into nothing, uh, he's gonna. He's in here, and he's going to throw an arrow. No, he's going to shoot an arrow. He's going to throw an arrow. This is, yeah, it's a, it's a hit. Eight on the dice. All right. Oh, okay. There you go. It's uh, seven points of piercing back. damage. It's not looking good. It's really small. It's down to a five-foot space, completely based on the body of Gates. Um, with Delkex, where he has an ally within five feet, advantage. I will, and I'm also not moving. So. I think that's an ally within five feet of the bad guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. So either way, I'm not going to move, so I'll... Here use you go, perfect. So, yep. advantage regardless. And either way, I hit. So. Good. And... Oh, well, I would... No, I see the thing. I would see you do have an ally within five feet of the creature, but that creature doesn't recognize it. Yes. It's even there. Exactly. So, so, so it really doesn't. So okay, that's, that's okay. But that, that's Either a, way. That's a cool way of going about it. I like that. Yeah. So, boom. So that we hit. And then plus my sneak attack because I had advantage. Excellent. Can't go wrong with that. That will help. You can uh, maybe even knock it down this turn. Well, let's have a look and see it's what we big, got. Big or that's and eh, it's only thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Better than nothing. Davis, you see this creature has been almost reduced to about half the size of your body now. And, and it's, it's on your, top of you. And again? it's on top of your body on the ground. Yeah. You can see the eyes flickering behind this golden shield that seems to be around your body. Oh, I can see the golden. Yep. This Arches. creature's in like attacking you on your body, trying to consume you, and the shield is just, just pushing it back, just keeping it from touching your skin. I'm going to hit it with a flame blade again. Three. That's right, okay. It just makes a flame blade. Um, what does it say you add to it? 
Uh, Your attack. I was just plus five. Okay. Uh, plus eight. five. So eight. Eight just over yeah. the line, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you did it. Okay, let's go. Well, oh, yeah, that's should. You slice down at the top. Your blade kind of glides off the uh, a golden sheen, and you can kind of feel this line across your body as it splits the creature, and it just kind of falls off the energy, hits the ground, look, look, and then the energy sheen. Splits. So it's gone. Letting it go. Doesn't seem to be moving anymore. It seems to be stagnant on the ground. This black slime. By the way, you guys are covered. In this black acidy slime, it smells yummy, disgusting. Am I still holding the gem one? Yes. Even the cantrip that Erewhon has is pressed into agitation because he's a high elf. <laughs> You're the only one clean right now. Shit. He hasn't cleaned himself yet, though. No, not yet. So that ends the combat round. Very good, everybody. Very good. Oh crap! Somebody died. Yeah. Well. That's I think not I did. true. <laughs> <laughs> she's still alive. Although technically she was dead before the combat, so... She's still alive. In spirit. She's here in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to call a certain team of ghost eliminators. <laughs> ghost go awayers. <laughs> ghost go buyers. No, no, spectre eliminators. <laughs> spectre eliminators. <laughs> oh, yes. It's like that famous party group. Her Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> Headed by Frederick Mercurium. <laughs> oh Alright, everybody. 440 experience each. 1 million XP. Oh, the XP. Oh, we're now level 5? Oh. Are you? No. Oh, oh, what what is level five? That's a hell of, hell, of, hell of a time. Right? Yeah, you said uh, 440? Yeah, 440. But suddenly, Erelon realizes he can attack twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, isn't it like 7,500? I'm at 30. I only had like 3,100. I got a waste to go yet. 6,500. You guys will be there soon. After the temple of Kelvin, they'll be there for sure. Oh, we're not done? Alright, so what do you guys do? Hit the bars again. Smash the bars. Smash, smash, smash. Eventually all the bars are knocked down, don't they're yeah. all smashed through. Yeah, this yeah. takes you about half a minute, maybe a minute, what the rest is doing. So Erlon's just trying to figure out, like, the, the, the space that he would have to walk... Is impassable. So oh, it's... You're talking space is just enough for a chipmunk. Okay. So it's... it's okay. You'd have to tippy-toe and get, like, three nat 20s on acrobatics. To, you yeah. know. It's certainly, unless you have some means of flying or something... Um, damn, I mean, the only can, can levitate. I mean, I have she flying shoes and a grappling She hook. can't move. Uh, we'll just push her directionally. <laughs> she can just go up. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally just gonna say, if she levitates, could we just shove her? Uh, I have a no, you can maybe hook. push her. Could she I, maybe go 20 feet, I, but uh, it's not like a momentum grapple thing. Grapple and pull? I uh, said before, some Although sort of thing. I was if you guys manage, you guys manage to get a rope over there, the 60 or 80 feet, and do that. Oh, yeah, right. So that's a little. Here's an idea. If we take the rope with the grappling hook, can we fire it? From the short bow to get over that gap. Now with the grappling hook, it's way too heavy. Yeah, it'll way just drop. It'll just drop. Of course, gravity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe if we had like a an actual like God, crossbow or something, that might work. But I have a heavy crossbow. You don't. Oh, for for the it's still not going to shoot the um shoot the uh, the okay yeah. the hook for sure. It's just oh, if you fire angel it's of fire now. All right, it's not going to work, guys. What if we ignore the grappling hook altogether? If we I was going to say, with a heavy crossbow, could we not just shoot, like, an arrow with, a like, a rope attached to it and use it almost like a tightrope type idea that we could, like, What's suspend it from the ceiling and then... To? Go for it. Well, you're the one with the heavy crossbow. Each rope is 50 foot long. I'll pass the heavy yeah, crossbow over to you. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> I, I have yeah, no, you have fun with that. <laughs> I, have, I have no proficiency with heavy crossbows is my problem. Um, arrow What's your stats, though? Smash! Smash! Bars are coming down. Smash, as you guys are talking about this. That's, screw it, I'll shoot the one rope. Oh, Arrow, 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 before you life. shoot that, okay. Erewhon's just gonna, gonna... Let them do their yeah. attempt. Whatever the hell they're doing over there. there. Yeah. Erewhon puts his hand... I don't know how to get back to my body. I forgot there was no floor. I just yeah. was like, yeah. bust the bars down and go. I forgot there's no floor. Can, can I just pull the lever again? Yeah. You go pull the lever, sure. No, you open the door. No, no, she floor. said, do you want to pull the lever? Yes. You go pull the lever. Okay. Okay. 
Erlon puts his hand over the crossbow before uh, Tanith can shoot it, and he says, it's not going to reach. And if it even connected with something over there, it'll just fall down. So we won't even be able to get it. Nani switches the switch. The door is open, or the bar is open on the, the, the hallway to the right-hand side of the one gate. It seems to be going in a circle. Just so that's the one that's to the left of the Keldron section, right? Just over there playing. You're going to have, uh, say you're looking at the door of Keldron. To the right is where Galus is. <laughs> to the next right is when the gate's open over there. It was this one. Um, is that, yep. Does that hallway have a floor? I believe every Check other hallway has a floor. These guys went through, yeah. Here's okay. a question. You're going to let something else out. Well, how far down does that hole go? That one's open right there. Uh, down, well, when you heard the ticks of little pieces of pebbles and stuff that got flicked off when uh, when Galus was running over there, you heard them like they were hitting off walls and stuff and falling for quite some distance. Nope. Bad plan. You just gonna jump into the hole? So, <laughs> was gonna come down Can I float? Because I'm a ghost. I'll try. <laughs> You're sitting on the floor right now. You think about it. You begin to rise. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna like float back down the corridor. Okay, you float back down the corridor. You can hear these guys uh, discussing the arrow. There's not enough length on the rope. It's it's not gonna work. And you make it over. On the shoulder. Your hand goes right. Ghost? Ah, dang it. I thought maybe he'd feel something, though. A chill? A chill. <laughs> I got chills. But you're now inside the room. Alara is there beside you, also floating. You but as soon as he gets on that side, his feet touch the ground again. This must be his thing. He mm -hmm. likes his feet on the ground. I, I put my feet on the ground, too. You've noticed that you're walking through these people. You walk through the remaining bars. Just now, Nani smashes open the last bar, kicks it down with her foot. They all, you hear them go... Ping, ping, ting, ting, ping, 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 for like 35 seconds before it goes, the echoes come back. <laughs> I'm going to try to talk to Erlon. Just be like, hello? Like, wave my hands. Kind of Waving in front, he puts Tanith's, Tanith's crossbow down and says, no, it's not enough rope, it's not going to work. What you guys do? Well, I'm looking down that hallway. That opened up? Thank you. Is that the one that I sent Stan dead from? No. No, that was that one. That was that one, wasn't it? This one. The one that's still closed. Can I, yeah. can I float to where we think we thought the gem needed to go? You can try absolutely to move over there and do something. Okay. Would you just You're still holding it. I do still have you do the gem. The gem. What do you do? Huh? Yeah. Tell me. What I'm, do you do? I'm going to go over and try to put it in the spot. So you walk over there or float over there. You know, you're walking, you put your feet in the ground. You mm -hmm. walk over there, you hold the gem up, and Roll perception as well. As you guys are talking, trying to figure out how to get Galus' body. 14. 14? 21. 21. Uh, 17 is easy. Right? Uh, I, I, I totally yeah. failed, and I only got a 10. Oh, yeah, 18. Okay, so Erlon and Nani. Nani, you get this feeling. You're the only one that gets this feeling. You just see it. You turn around, Nani, from the switch. You look behind you at the, the doors to Keldron. You just happen to be get, glancing that way, and you guys can see the red gem apparate. Floating. <laughs> Just floating there, within inches of the door, and then it goes. Uh, and you can hear. And then uh, Galus, to the right-hand side of you, uh, you also see it. Erlon, another indent forms into the into the into the wall. Looks like look at that. it looks like actually what it is, it looks like an almost small alcove was sunken in, only about a foot high, maybe two feet wide, and it just has a hook on it. A hook. A oh, hook. hook on it. Just a small hook. Just like that. About as big as my thumb, just like that. Kind of sitting out of the top. Can I just go like I mean I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing but net. Hmm. So, when is... hmm. so, so guys, when so that has opened, I would Dell have heard the rock kind of like grinding 
behind him. Oh yeah, and that draws all the attention of everybody for sure. Yeah, you okay. hear that, and you can see it. The, the gem is there. You can see the indentation move out or move in. Sorry. Yep. You see all that. Okay. So, Erlon looks over to the corridor where Galus's body is, and looks back to the door. Is Light that back there begins to fade now into darkness, complete darkness now. Okay. Uh, was that? How the heck did that gem get over there? Did it's obviously me, but you can't see me. Yeah, that's what... <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying that at last. No! <laughs> roll, roll that. Your, your arcana back then was huge. Now that you've got a little more evidence on it, roll an insight. With advantage, because you've got that massive arcana. Wow. Um, Twelve. Twelve. Well, I mean, logically, you've rolled all day. <laughs> somebody was dealing damage to the creature. Somebody killed the other creature over there. Somebody, you've seen it happen. You've seen some sort of magic happen. As well as this gem now magically here. you got to put two and two together. Nani, roll, roll insight as well. Insight. Good choice. <laughs> no. No? What did you roll? Two, two on the dice. Oh my god. Yep. I... That's where we're at. While he's doing That's that... That's solid six. Just that. <laughs> I'm going to cast Woodcraft yeah. to make like a sound. Of course. You make a sensory effect, so like a, the sound of something. It's just a cantrip? Yeah. Oh, um, just like a, it's just a, a, hey, a, stupid. a bird whistle. Okay. Yeah, let's try what kind of bird whistle? Just a random one? Or yeah. maybe one oh, from maybe. Ah! his hometown? Or, or maybe yeah, something one that has significance because of the two elves. So, Alright, yeah. you hear the sound of a Brelian hero. Squealing out in the sky, three times. <laughs> Seems to be coming from right in front of your face. Carolyn falls on her ass. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's Erlon loud and it's the hell out of me. So Erlon is now on his ass. Everybody heard that. And what are you uh, doing down there? You, you, it was in my face. What? The, now, you know there's a few spells that can do this. Galus! Precipitation for one. Makes a noise. Thunder, uh, um... There's another one that starts with a T. Thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy makes a noise. There's other things I that make noises. I can't say it, but I know what This is mean. some sort of magic. Okay, thank you. Everyone gets back up on his feet and he says, Well, obviously something happened over there when she grabbed the gem. And she, I guess Galus is in some sort of Astral form or a ghost or a spirit. You hear a bell dinging. Tanith will originally cast detect, uh, detect magic. It doesn't see dead people, I don't think. Since the project of presence of magic within 30 feet. And technically that would be magic. It is technically magic. It is magic. You're more so of a ghost, though. Uh, you, would, you would sense the spell. You would sense the spell going off. In the vicinity of Erlon, right there for sure. Okay. That and, and uh, roll a cannon. There's the bird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Twelve. Twelve. You notice the weaves of the magic aren't like yours. They seem more nature-like. You know, a little more green, a little <laughs> more brown. Possibly some sort of druid. druid possibly some sort of druid craft. That's druid craft of some sort. Erlon throws his hands up. Yeah, that's 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 Galus for sure. All right. So if she's separated from her body, that means she's dead. She is probably dead over there. So we 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 have to get there somehow and bring her body back, so we can check to see if it's just some sort of effect of that. Or she pulled. could go back to her body and then come back. You hear all this. Do you think I would have done that already? Erlon shakes his head. Well, you never he tried, just... so. I'm back in your body. Only he, he, uh, yeah, he has a point. You haven't actually attempted to do that yet. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk back to my body then. You want to walk over the floorless floor? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Oof, so strange. 
<laughs> in the neighborhood. I guess I'll ask him. Yeah. How? <laughs> How do I feel bad? I have only come this far. Never. How did you go bad? Um, I my guess I'll just coming. like crouch down and like put my hand over where my body's heart would be. He also approaches down beside you and he puts his hand over where your belly is and he says, They protect you, but it won't last forever. As your hand goes down to touch the heart and those words pass into your ears, you can feel a vibration and your eyes shudder. It goes black for a second and then you're looking up at the ceiling. The lights again come on, this dim light. And you're looking up at the bottom of this three foot stand. And that is where we will end the evening. Thank you for watching the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This has been The Depths of Felthan, Episode 19, The Ash to Ashes, Part A.